Hello and welcome to Indus News Live from Istanbul. I'm Hira Mustafa and these are the headlines. At least 26 more Palestinians have been killed after Israel carried out its most intense offensive across the Gaza Strip yet. Medics say dozens of others were wounded as Israeli airstrikes flattened two residential buildings and also hit home of Hamas Gaza chief. At least 174 Palestinians, including 47 children, have been killed and more than a thousand wounded in Israeli strikes since 10th of May. Meanwhile, thousands of people have marched in support of Palestinians in major European and US cities. Intense fighting between the Taliban and Afghan government forces has resumed in southern Helmand province as a three-day ceasefire ends. The military accused the Taliban of attacking security checkpoints on the outskirts of Lashkar Gah and other districts of Helmand. However, a Taliban spokesperson refuted the military's allegations, saying the Afghan forces started the operation. and Britain have called on Myanmar's military to avoid civilian casualties in northwestern town of Mindad. Both counties' missions in Myanmar voiced concern after the country's shadow government appealed for international help. Meanwhile, fighters of a local militia have pulled back from Mindad after days of assault by combat troops. India has reported more than 4,000 COVID-19 deaths and over 311,000 infections in the past 24 hours. In Pakistan, 76 more people lost their lives to the virus and over 2,300 tested positive overnight. The global number of coronavirus infections has topped 162 million with more than 3.36 million deaths. Well, those were the headlines, news in detail, coming after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now, the news in detail. At least 26 more Palestinians have been killed after Israel carried out its most intense offensive across the Gaza Strip yet. At least 174 Palestinians, including 47 children, have been killed and more than 1,000 wounded in Israeli strikes since 10th of May. Disregarding global calls for de-escalation, Israeli rained down death and destruction on the Gaza Strip, flattening at least two residential buildings. Israeli jets also targeted the home of Hamas Gaza chief Yahya al Senwar. In a televised address, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu pledged to continue the offensive on Gaza for as long as necessary. Israel's Defense Minister Benny Gantz dismissed the mandate and jurisdiction of the UN, saying no one has the right to question Israel's actions. No country, institution or international body can question our right to protect our citizens and our sovereignty. I call upon Hamas, stop terrorizing our people and stop terrorizing yours. It is absurd that we do everything in our power to avoid hitting your civilians while you crowdly hide behind them. U.S. President Joe Biden held separate phone calls with Israeli and Palestinian leaders, expressing concerns over the escalating conflict. He told the Israeli Prime Minister that the safety and security of journalists and independent media is Tel Aviv's paramount responsibility. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres also said he is deeply disturbed by Israel's strike on Gaza media building. This comes after an Israeli airstrike destroyed a building in Gaza that houses several international media outlets and residential apartments. Talking to supporters in Doha, Hamas chief Ismail Haniyeh refused to give in and urged the Muslim world to extend whatever help they can. But today, we are all responsible for Jerusalem. Whoever can help Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa with politics, 
with media with social media or with financial support please do whoever can do more than that then please do the united nations security council is set to convene meeting on the conflict today Thousands of pro-Palestine protesters hit the streets in major cities around the world to express solidarity with the Palestinians. <laughs> the protesters slammed Israel for its brutal aggression and called on the international community to force an immediate halt to Tel Aviv's atrocities. Thousands of people took to the streets in Washington and New York, carrying signs and waving flags in a show of support for Gaza. A huge number of Palestinian supporters also staged protests across Europe including Germany, Austria, France and Greece. However, in Berlin, Paris and Athens, police used tear gas and water cannons to disperse the peaceful protesters. Meanwhile, in West Bank, scuffles erupted between Israeli police and Palestinians who were staging protests to mark the Nakba Day. There is another wall where they will draw Palestine's map and inside of it is Sheikh Jarrah's neighborhood from where the fire started in all of Palestine. Today on Nakba's 73rd anniversary we do not want to say that Nakba is still ongoing but we want to say today in Nakba's anniversary that it is time for the Nakba to stop after this popular outburst after this revolution that Palestine is going through from sea to river. We want to say that it is time for the Nakba to stop and hopefully in Nakba's anniversary next year all of Palestine will be free. Meanwhile pro Palestine and pro Israel demonstrators faced off in Toronto. Intense fighting between the Taliban and Afghan government forces has resumed in southern Helmand province as a 3-day eat ceasefire ends. The head of Helmand Council accused the Taliban of attacking security checkpoints on the outskirts of Lashkar Gah and other districts. He said the fighting started early today and is still ongoing. However, a Taliban spokesperson refuted the military's allegations, saying the Afghan forces started the offensive. Helmand has seen intense fighting since the U.S. began its troops withdrawal from Afghanistan earlier this month. Meanwhile, ISIS has claimed responsibility for the Friday attack on a Kabul mosque, which took 12 lives. In Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir, police have arrested two sons of the martyred Hurriyat leader Muhammad Ashraf Sehrai. Police detained Mujahid Sehrai and Rashid Sehrai in Srinagar and took them to Kupwara. The scums a day after Indian forces arrested 21 people for holding protests against Israel's military offensive in Gaza. The occupying forces blamed the Kashmiris for attempting to liberate the situation in Palestine to disturb public peace. Reportedly, a case has been registered against them for raising pro-freedom slogans. Meanwhile, Indian forces have launched a violent operation in the outskirts of Jammu city. India has reported more than 4,000 COVID-19 deaths and over 311,000 infections in the past 24 hours. The global number of cases has stopped 162 million with more than 3.36 million deaths. More in this report. With the troubling weary and drug shortages and disrupted vaccine drives, India continues to struggle with the dire coronavirus crisis. Member of India's upper house, Congress leader Rajiv Sattav has died of COVID-19 complications at the age of 46. Meanwhile, family members of patients staged a protest in Chennai city to obtain remdesivir drug that is used for the treatment of COVID-19. India's government official confirmed that bodies of coronavirus victims were found dumped in rivers. It reflected an alarming practice that officials believed may stem from poverty and fear of the disease in villages. People are so scared that they're not even coming here to take bath. After reading and watching the news that over 40-50 bodies were found, out of which some were suspected to be coronavirus positive, despite their faith in the Ganges. In the U.S., Center of Disease and Prevention Control said schools should continue to use masks and follow social distancing rule for this academic year, as all students will not be fully vaccinated. Down in the south, Argentina has crossed 70,000 deaths in the midst of a second outbreak that is worsened by a slow vaccination process. Medics say in the capital city of Buenos Aires, 
the mortality rate in intensive care is as high as 67 percent. Meanwhile, as Brazil registered more than 2,000 deaths and over 67,000 cases in a day, President Jair Bolsonaro yet again said Brazilians do not have to stay at home. To the health professionals, we regret the deaths from COVID and the other deaths in Brazil, but we must face the problem. It is not by staying under the bed covers and at home that we are going to solve this problem. We have to face COVID-19. Life goes on. We are already talking about the third wave. If the third wave comes, we will also have the fourth, fifth, sixth infinite waves. Of course, we hope against it, but we must face it. Europe seems to be seeing slightly positive developments. Tourist-filled airports, seaports and highways in Greece as the country officially opened its door to international visitors. Beaches in Italy also appear to be a bit crowded as the new rules come into force, scrapping quarantine requirements for visitors from the EU, the UK, among others. In Pakistan, COVID-19 has claimed 76 more lives over the past 24 hours. The health ministry says the nationwide fatality toll has crossed 19,500. The ministry said nearly 2,400 tested positive for the virus overnight. It said the caseload has exceeded 877,000, while nearly 789,000 patients have recovered. The number of active cases stands at 68,819. The ministry said over 4,300 patients are in critical condition. The U.S. and Britain have called on Myanmar's military to avoid civilian casualties in the northwestern town of Mindet. Both counties' missions in Myanmar issued statements after a shadow national unity government appealed for international help. U.S. Embassy said the military's use of weapons of war against civilians shows the regime's desire to hold on to power. Britain's mission said evidence of atrocities should be sent to UN investigators so perpetrators can be held to account. Meanwhile, fighters of a local militia have pulled back from Mindet after days of assault by combat troops. Protests continue across the country demanding restoration of democracy and freedom for jailed politicians. At least 790 people have been killed by the security forces in crackdowns on protest against junta rule. North Korea has criticized South Korea's ongoing biennial military training and its recent joint exercise with the U.S. Pyongyang's media warned that Seoul will only stab itself in the eyes by confronting North Korea. It says Seoul's military buildup and drills are strictly based on its plan for a preemptive strike. Pyongyang said the moves further aggravate the already critical tension on the Korean peninsula. Earlier this month, South Korea and the U.S. also held a joint cargo loading and unloading drill at Daegu Air Base. Turkey says it has killed two more PKK militants during an anti-terror operation in northern Iraq. In a tweet, the Turkish Defense Ministry said Turkish armed drone detected the militants in the Zap region. The ministry said the area was within the scope of Ankara's Claw Yildirim operation. It said Turkey will continue operations until all terrorists are eliminated. Ankara holds PKK responsible for some 40,000 deaths in a 30-year conflict. Chileans are heading to the polls on the second day of voting to decide who will write the new constitution. Citizens will select the 155 members of the Constitutional Assembly that will draft a new charter over a year. Elections will also be held for governors, mayors and city council members. Last year, citizens overwhelmingly decided to scrap the current constitution implemented during the Augusto Pinochet dictatorship. It was a key demand of demonstrators who were protesting since October 2019. Government data shows some 14 million people are eligible to vote in the country. According to Chile's electoral service, more than 3 million people cast their ballot on Saturday. And now it's time to take a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Pakistan's meteorological department says Cyclone Taute poses no serious threat to the country's coastal areas. 
Meteorological department forecasts moderate to heavy rainfalls and gusty winds of 40 to 60 km per hour in the coastal city of Karachi. An official said Pakistan coastal areas will likely experience the cyclone's minimal peripheral effects. However, the department has advised fishermen to remain in the harbour. Meanwhile, the cyclone is already wrecking havoc in southwestern India and has claimed two lives. SpaceX has successfully launched a Falcon 9 rocket carrying 52 Starlink microsatellites. The spacecraft is also transporting two satellites of other companies. The rocket was launched from the Florida State's Kennedy Space Center. SpaceX says they intend to return it back to Earth once more. The Starlink network seeks to provide internet access through a large number of small satellites with a mass of less than 500 kilograms. The first 60 Starlink satellites were taken into orbit in 2019. Now it's time to have a look at the weather update across the globe. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at indus.news.